childhood is meant to be a time of joy and innocence. But it's also a time when the difference between what is safe and what is dangerous is not yet clear. As Elaine Munyon was tragically reminded on March 4th, 1992 at her home in Shawnee, Kansas. That morning, Elaine was reading to her four oldest children, while her 18-month-old twins, David and Jesse, played nearby. The older twins always had their big sister, who wanted to play, too. These guys just kind of have each other, so wherever one goes, the other goes. So they saved it until the morning, as Moses commanded. Eat today, Moses said, because today is the Sabbath to the Lord. You will not find any of it on the ground today. Six days you are to gather it, but on the seventh day, there will not be any. Nevertheless, some of the people... It's not often that you get all four of them excited about a story at the same time. That was one reason I wasn't as in tune to the babies as I might normally have been. People collected the manna from the ground every day, except on tonight. The Sunday. The Sunday. I'll just say Sunday. 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 The same thing. Yeah, the Sabbath's a hard word. Eat it today, Moses said, because today is the Sabbath to the Lord. You will not. It like slowly permeates your consciousness. Wait a minute. I haven't heard any noise. I don't hear any talking. Jonathan, could you check on the twins? <laughs> Mom, the baby's in the pool. The pool? He was so calm about it. I thought surely he must mean they're in the pool area. Half of me knew that it was a nightmare come true. And the other half of my mind was just saying, no, it's, it's not true. They're not in there. They couldn't be in there. I yelled to my daughter to call 911. Shawnee 911, emergency. Um, my baby What's wrong? My mom's outside. My baby brother's in the pool. My baby drowned it. Okay, let me transfer you to the ambulance. Don't hang up. Fire and ambulance, where do you need us? Go ahead. What's the problem? She hung up. She said that her mother's outside and the boy and little boy was in the pool and they think she dr he drowned. Rescue units were immediately dispatched to the address that had automatically come up on the screen. There was no sign of life. It had been so long since I'd had CPR training that I wasn't sure that I was doing it correctly. Help me! I could feel myself starting to slip over the edge into hysteria where all I was going to be able to do was scream. Help me! Please! From across the field, David Rood heard her cries for help. I could see that she was trying to give CPR to both the babies and scream for help. Elaine quickly instructed David on how to do CPR. And I remember feeling guilty about giving David to him, and yet at the same time I knew that it would be much better to have one person for each baby instead of me trying to do them both. I was getting scared because I didn't know if I was helping. I didn't know if I was doing things right. I was really hoping somebody else would come along and help. Shawnee police officer Larry Burmaster arrived at the house within minutes of the call. The biggest surprise at that point was to find that there were two victims. I remember thinking that somehow I would have to decide which child to work with, and I, and I really wished that I could do something for both of them. Why don't you try and check and see if you can find a pulse on him? Jeff, my babies are dead. 
710 dispatch. We have two victims. When Shawnee Fire Marshal Jeff Hudson arrived, he recognized Elaine. Just six weeks earlier, he had given her family a tour of the local fire station. I was terrified. I was scared. Jesse wasn't breathing. There was no pulse. He was blue. His eyes were open, and they were rolled back. He was lifeless. I remember thinking, that's it, they're both gone. They're just both dead. They won't be able to, to bring him back. Within five minutes, the first medic units arrived, including paramedic Mark Owens. He immediately went to work on David, whose condition was extremely critical. He was so cold, all his peripheral veins constricted, so we had to go through the bone into the actual bone marrow um, and give him um, IV fluids that way. We had to suction the water out of his lungs at that time also. Um, no spontaneous respiration. Jesse was taken by ambulance to the nearest hospital. His twin brother, David, still in critical condition, was taken by helicopter to Children's Mercy Hospital 20 miles away. As soon as Rob Munyon heard what had happened to his youngest sons, he rushed home from work. I had a sick feeling in my stomach. Elaine said that we need to decide where to go because they were going to different hospitals. I guess as their mom, then I needed to be with the one who wasn't going to make it. They brought me right in, and they let me stand right by his head. And I, I just bent right over, right to his ear, and just sang to him his favorite little nursery songs. And I told him I loved him. They transferred Jesse over later, after he was stabilized. They felt like they would get better faster if they were together. We asked about the possibility of brain damage. And of course, at that point, they couldn't give us much of an answer. They said it would take some time to tell. Elaine stayed with her babies through the night. I remember as the hours went on and David still didn't wake up, becoming more and more concerned that there would be brain damage. And I remember praying and asking God, please don't take Jesse's playmate away. The next morning, the twins were examined by pediatric critical care physician, Brad Bond. Okay, good boy. In my experience, the majority of these children that suffer a near-drowning episode will have brain dysfunction. And to see them recover so dramatically and come back to a normal neurologic state uh, was, uh, was very uplifting and heartwarming. And where's Jesse's nose? Yes, that's right. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Very good. When Jesse reached over and, and patted David, and David was awake and looking around, I just knew that they were both okay. And I felt like all those broken pieces of my heart were just back together again. Two months later, Jesse and David have fully recovered without any sign of brain damage. You just can't ever be too safe with babies. They don't understand danger the way we do. Now we have the pool cover drained, and we never let the babies out on the deck unless an adult is there. Get a bubble. Go get the bubble. There you go. They're cute, and they're happy, and I love them very much, and I'm really glad God saved them. We're very thankful for all the emergency workers. I just feel this incredible um, love for them. I mean, they saved the lives of my children, and I'm so thankful for that. Can you say wow?